years ago it began. The World Bank published a dossier that held Uganda as the most entrepreneurial nation in the world. According to the 2009 dossier, Uganda had the highest number of businesses started each year compared to the other nations of the world. However, those businesses breathed their last almost as soon as they started operation. Less than two out of every new businesses lived to celebrate their first anniversary. And this is not a Ugandan problem. It is an African problem. Inspired by the success story of a young African that began displaying his entrepreneurial skills by renting some space in his mother's fridge at the age of nine, who then ascended from the level of rural taxi operator to the heights of the business world. If you cannot inspire yourself, a group of young energetic Ugandans devised a tool to identify Africa's smartest talent. Inspire them to believe in success. Motivate them to aspire to reach the greatest height. Nurture them to grow strong. Empower them to stand firm. Mentor them to resist harsh conditions and commission them to live forever. In the end, the judges were astounded at the immensity of East Africa's untapped talent. Smart, intelligent, ambitious and enthusiastic young Africans, all with brilliant business ideas but without the means to achieve their dreams, to put their great ideas into material progress. Why you? What makes you special? There's no one who has ever did that project. It's because I have a feeling that Africa needs to get to the next level. Not even winning. Fast learning. I'll start a fast food and through it I'll start At exactly 9.30 a.m., the candidates had their first encounter with the CEO who issued them with their first task. The CEO ensured that each team had a starting capital of 100,000 Uganda shillings to buy fruits that they would sell on the streets for profit. This was meant to test their selling and negotiation skills. We were just left with one. We had two yeah. pineapples. They're gone. Uh, they're also okay. gone. The results for all the three groups turned out better than expected. However, the least successful of the three groups faced the CEO's displeasure. The winning team accrued a profit of 330,000 Uganda shillings. In the end, three participants lost their positions at the academy. 21 contestants went to Crown Beverages, where the CEO asked the marketing manager of Crown Beverages to issue the participants their task. Planning and execution was highly eventful. 18 contestants advanced to the third task of Project Inspire Africa Season 1. They were introduced to the global business of Forex Trimber. The task seemed impossible, but the contestants proved everyone wrong. The best team accumulated a profit of 1,200 US dollars in a span of just three hours, while the least successful team lost 33,000 US dollars. 16 candidates reached this level and were subsequently introduced to the world of banking and credit. This task immeasurably challenged the candidates, but the bankers were impressed by the participants' show of skill and good judgment with just 10 hours of execution time. 14 candidates found their way to the Republic of Rwanda, to which the contestants confessed was the neatest city they had seen so far. Here, they were introduced to corporate social work. The contestants joined the rest of Rwanda in their monthly community service session codenamed Umuganda. The CEO of Inspire Africa later unveiled Rwanda as the smartest, cleanest and most organized nation in East Africa and their president Paul Kagame as the most development-minded president of modern Africa. He concluded that Rwanda is a candle that shines for the whole of Africa to see. After the Umuganda, the candidates were led to the genocide memorial at Gisozi in the Rwandan capital, Kigali. Here, they witnessed the horrors of the 1994 genocide firsthand. The task was done at one of the fastest growing airlines in Africa, Rwanda Air, where participants developed a new destination route for the airline's new Boeing 800NG and followed that up with a marketing strategy on how to enter a new market. The CEO, John Mirenge, expressed his amazement at the strategies formulated by such young people in only eight hours. 
From Rwanda, the participants headed to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, where they developed a commercial for JB Belmont Hotel. The work from each team was remarkable. Later on, after putting in such hard work in the previous task, the participants were given a treat by the CEO. They were sent to Zanzibar for a spot of fun. From Zanzibar, the participants caught up with the CEO, where they were tasked with preparing a two-course meal in only one hour and 15 minutes. The scenario involved impressing an investor, willing to invest $1 billion with their culinary skills while they hosted him at their homes. There was a change in team formation. It was men versus women. The chef from White Sand Sarova tasted the food and the women came up on top in terms of concept and theme as well as flavor. The participants found themselves back in Kigali at 6 a.m., still half asleep. Their next task from the CEO involved the participants making their way back to Kampala by road with only a quarter of their fare. It was imperative that none of the teams travel on the same bus or any other mode of transportation for that matter. In order to get the remainder of their fare, they had to sell something. Incredibly, the winning team had a saving of 28,000 Uganda shillings at the top of the road trip. Back in Kampala City, the teams met both the CEO of Inspire Africa and the Daily Monitor, a component of the nation media group, Dr. Githingi, who tasked the participants to develop a five-year strategic plan to uplift the struggling print media department, considering the fact that social media is fast gaining ground. Each team, as a consultant, presented their five-year strategic plan. The task was to test them about their innovative thinking. The final four contestants took on the East African governments and stakeholders in the East African community integration in a business debate live on NTV on the 28th of March at Hotel Africana under the theme Building Businesses to Last. Hello and welcome to Inspire Live Business Debate. My name is Patrick Kamara. What does the East African community mean to you? In Rwanda, in Burundi. For example, uh, being able to access greater markets. And thereafter, the first ever Inspire Africa Grand Finale at the Serena Conference Center, Kigali, Rwanda, on the 1st of April. Clarice will take this money. At Inspire Africa, we believe that successful entrepreneurship holds the best answer to the unemployment crisis of today. We therefore see a movement of young, able-minded and business-oriented people transforming the African economy through a progressive and innovative entrepreneurial approach. 